queens and kings of Swift. It's Prof G, and it's also time to polish up our Predict app, our Magic 8-Ball clone. We'll learn how to use a Z-Stack to stack views one on top of another so that we can create a look that mimics an animated Magic 8-Ball. We'll also learn about offsets, minimum scale factor for shrinking fonts to fit a space, and we'll get a first look at the Xcode app simulator. Let's finish that app. So Swifter, if you're at this lesson, I'm assuming you've already built the Predict app from an earlier lesson and that this app shows a random value from an array of possible Magic 8-Ball predictions. Now in this lesson, we're going to improve the look of our 8-Ball by building up the 8-Ball image using three views, one on top of the other. The bottommost view will be our 8-Ball image, then we'll add an indigo circle to cover up the white part of the 8-Ball, and then we'll add a text view on top of the indigo circle, and the text view will have an indigo background and use white text for letters. Now the way we'll accomplish this is by using what's called a Z-Stack. Now remember in SwiftUI, a V-Stack will stack items vertically on screen, an H-Stack will stack items horizontally, while a Z-Stack will stack items one on top of the other, and the first view listed in the Z-Stack's curlies is the bottommost view. So make sure that you've got the Predict project from part one up and ready to go and let's start coding. So let's start by creating a circle just below our image view. Circle is a view, so I'm gonna type in circle, that's got a capital C because it's a view, and select the option with open and close parens. Xcode says that this creates a new circle shape, that's what we wanna do, so press return. And now the circle looks a bit larger than the inner white area where we have the question mark, but you already know how we can shrink that circle. The circle is just a view, and you've already used a modifier to constrain the size of a view. Remember what that is? The frame modifier. So below the circle, I'm gonna say dot frame and we want width and height. So I'll say W-I-H-E. That highlights the width and height parameters. Press return. And I played with these numbers beforehand. So I know that a width and a height of 140 should work pretty well. Now to make our circle indigo, we also know how to do this. Below the circle, we can add the dot foreground style modifier and pass in the color that we wanna use, which is dot indigo. And this is looking good. Now, as mentioned, to move the circle on top of our image, we're gonna place both the image and the circle in a Z stack. A Z stack will stack views one on top of the other. The topmost view is on the bottom, the ones below it are stacked on top. So above the image view, I'm gonna enter Z stack, all one word, capital Z, capital S, open curlies, press return, Xcode adds the closing curlies, then I'm gonna highlight both my image view and my circle with all of their modifiers, cut them out with Command X, paste them in between the Z stack curlies with Command V, and these guys are indeed on top of each other. Congratulations, Swifter, you've just used the Z stack. But we do see that the circle is a bit lower than we'd like, but we can slide the view around by using another modifier called offset. Now the iOS coordinate system looks like this. It starts with 00, zero in the upper left hand corner, positive x coordinates move to the right, positive y coordinates move down. So if we want to move up, what we want to do is offset by a negative y value. So follow along. We'll add a modifier below the circle saying dot OFF. We see a bunch of options in here, but I want this offset option with the X and Y parameters. Xcode says that this offsets the view by the specified horizontal and vertical distances. We only want the vertical distance. That's the Y parameter. So if I continue typing the letter Y, just the Y parameter is highlighted, press return, and I wanna slide this up so it's gonna be a negative value. I played with these values, minus 20 should work great, and it does. Now I'd like to stack my text view on top of my circle. So what I'm gonna do is highlight my text view with all of its modifiers, cut it out with Command X, and then make some space below the circle and paste it in with a Command V. Now, if we click the predict button, we see a few problems. We need to constrain the text view in a frame so it's going to be just inside the circle, and we need to turn the font color white. So let's turn that font color white first. Just below the font modifier, we'll add a dot foreground style modifier, passing in the color dot white. Now, I'd also like to set the background color of the text just so that we can see how this is framed on top of our circle. Now, one thing about modifiers, they modify in order from top to bottom. And in a future lesson, we'll show how modifier order can impact how a view is created and displayed. So the best place for our background modifier is after our frame. That'll let us apply the background color to the entire frame. You might think since there's a foreground style modifier, there should be a background style modifier to handle the background color, but there's not. For some reason it's called background, not background style, but if we type in dot background, we see one here that accepts a style, 
Code completion says that this sets the view background to a style, and from our earlier lessons, we know that a color is a style, so press return to accept this modifier, and for now, why don't we set the color to dot orange, so that the background of the text shows up better on top of the indigo circle. We'll switch it back in a bit. Now we're not seeing any text, so just for layout purposes, what I'm going to do is enter our longest string in the text view instead of the variable. In the previous lesson, we found out this was the string concentrate and ask again, and we see our text view in place, but we should constrain this in a frame so that the text is entirely inside of our circle. Swifter, you know how to use a frame. I'm going to delete the old frame modifier from the text view that was just constraining the height, and I'll type over this dot frame w-y-h-e select the option with the width and height options press return and i'm going to keep the width and height 100 by 100 in here but we do need to slide the frame up we know how to do this we just need our good buddy offset but again modifier order does matter so we want to make sure that we add that offset modifier below the background so below the background modifier i'm going to type dot o f f y select the option with the y parameter press return and for the y value we'll put in minus 20 just like we did with the circle view above this nice now just to quickly show you that the order of modifiers does matter what i'm going to do is i'm going to highlight and cut out my offset and i'm going to put it above the background and look what happens the text in the frame is shifted up but the background that's orange is not shifted up so if i want to shift that background up as well i've got to make sure that my offset is below background now there's one more thing that we're noticing in our app when the text is too large to show in the frame we see a dot 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 and the text is cut off we don't want that to happen one way we can fix this is by setting a scale factor so that our font will scale down in font size to try its best to fit it inside of our frame let me show you how we do that below the font modifier in the text view we'll add a new line for a new modifier dot start typing minimum and we see this value up here minimum scale factor code completion says this sets the minimum amount that the text in this view scales down to fit the available space we just put a percentage in here and whatever that number is that's the lowest amount swift ui will multiply our font size by to try to squish everything in the frame that's a minimum value so it doesn't have to use that value unless it needs it let me show you press return here now 1.0 is 100 percent size that's the normal size no scale factor but if we enter 0.4 that will scale the font down as small as 40 percent of its original size but look what happens when we do this we can fit our longest line in here concentrate and ask again nice swifter i think we're ready why don't we get rid of the string literal that we put inside of the text view and replace this with our prediction variable click on that predict button things are looking spectacular now that we know everything is formatted the way we want we don't need our orange background anymore we could set this to indigo but the background is clear by default so we can just delete the background modifier for our text view so now let's click on that predict button a bunch of times and we see we've got lots of different options on here how are things going are you an excellent developer you may rely on it says our magic gate ball now i want to show you one more thing we've been running our app in the xcode preview but there's also something built into xcode a separate app called the simulator first what we're going to do is we're going to select the kind of device we want to simulate so this area that i'm pointing at up here is called the scheme if you pull down on this you can select the kind of device that you want to simulate and i want to simulate an iPhone 15 Pro that's already selected but once you've chosen your device then we can go up to the play button in the upper left hand corner click that you see hammer time build succeeded if there are no errors in your app in the top and to the right in your toolbar you'll see a circle move forward on the different stages that are necessary to build the app this might take a bit of time the first time you use your simulator but eventually the simulator will pop up and your app is running in a simulator and that simulation by the way is still tied to xcode you see the debug pane opens up automatically in future lessons we'll show how to use that debug pane while we're in the simulator but right now let's click on predict and look at that smooth animations this is working fantastically now swifter if you check out the simulator this is a separately running app and you've got lots of different options under the device option for example you can shift left and right 
that's useful for testing. Under features, there's an option for location. So if you're doing any location testing, you can set a custom location. You can simulate a city run, a city bike ride, a freeway drive. The IO menu has options to pull up or hide the keyboard. We're not doing anything with the keyboard right now, so that doesn't do anything. But again, we'll see it in future apps. Under device, there are lots of other options. For example, you can simulate a shake. You can simulate Siri. But one of the things I wanted to show you is click on the home button in the menu and you see your app close as it's like swiping up for the home screen and we see the predict icon is in here remember we added that in the previous lesson looking great now if you want to stop your app from running and being linked to xcode you can double tap on home and then just swipe your app up you get a message in the debugger that says it was terminated but the simulator is still running and it's still got a version of our app installed so if i command tab over to return to the simulator i can click that predict app icon and our app relaunches running like new at this point, we're not linked to the Xcode simulator, so we can't debug if we've deliberately crashed our app like we did, but it's working great. And it's okay to quit the simulator and hide the debugger and resume the preview. Swifter, we're done with the Predict app. Excellent work. Call your friends over, show it to mom and dad, and celebrate that big learning. Because we learned about Z-Stacks, offsets, minimum scale factors. We used the simulator and we saw the icon we installed in our earlier lesson. I hope you're feeling good about those skills you've acquired, and if you'd like this introduction, my entire university course is available free online in YouTube with over 100 code-along right, video right, tutorials, right. tests. You can find the entire playlist at bit.ly slash prof-g-swiftui, all lowercase, all one word. There are also slides in the course drive that you'll find at gallagher.com as well. These include the weekly keynote slides that I present to my students during the semester. They'll have challenge exercises in there. And after my class each week, I post the solutions. All I want is for this content to get out there and be used by others. So please feel free to tell your friends, your family, your colleagues, your teachers, if they're ready to acquire aptacular skills, like and subscribe. There's more goodness to come. Keep hacking.